Hello everyone, this is a follow-up video for the navigational computer that I'm building for my Jeep. Uh, I'll just go over what I've accomplished since the last video. I've gotten the entire project mounted on this aluminum sheet here. Had to use something that was non ferrous because metal such as iron would mess up the compass readings. Uh, this is just a really crude prototype though, so the uh, actual dashboard unit will be a little bit better. But I have the graphical VFD here. Uh, this is 256 by 128 pixels. Uh, this is just a really simple 16 pin keypad. And I got the whole thing powered off of this 13.8 volt desktop power supply. And I got my FT817 amateur radio receiver right above that. Uh, I just got the audio out running to this little TNC here that's based on an Arduino. I believe it's an Arduino Mini clone. It's running that, so I've just got the audio in. Uh, the software will do transmit now, but I've only got this hooked up to my speaker port because I didn't want to drag out my data cable right now. So I'll go ahead and just go over the functional aspects of the software and power this up. So uh, once the OS boots up here, I'll go over the, 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 the modes that I have built into it. So there's the APRS data that just flashed on the bottom. It's live data from the uh, from the radio, so occasionally some messages will pop up. Uh, I have the date and time up here, so currently it's showing January 15, 2014, and it's about uh, 23:25 in the, in the evening. The fuel gauge is here, both percentage and gallons being represented. This is uh, currently just uh, bogus data because this is hooked up to an analog digital converter. The pins are just left floating, they're not hooked up to anything, so it's just getting a bunch of spurious data. The coolant, RPM, oil pressure, battery, same story for those. They're all run off the ADC. Actually, the RPM is a digital counter, but there's nothing feeding it right now, so the, the data is not valid. Uh, the compass heading is here, elevation here. Um, longitude, latitude, and this is a representation of the of the compass. This is tilt compensated, so the line indicates north. If I uh, if I tilt the device, that disc will remain level. So um, the miles per hour are jumping around a little bit because right now it's it's getting the speed from the GPS. Right below that is the odometer. It's really hard to see because this camera is getting saturated. It but it's showing 1.3 miles. So the modes are changed via the asterisk and then the mode number. So mode number one, I have a really simple 3D demo set up. I'm just drawing a cube right now and getting about 12.8, 12.9 frames per second. I can use the keypad uh, 2468 to move the cube around or press any combination of them to uh, move the cube in any direction I want. And then one and three will zoom out and zoom in. So I do use some 3D um, uh, graphing for uh, informational purposes, such as the radar that I will have uh, built into the APRS mode, so I can see nearby stations. Uh, so this is just a functional test of my 3D code, so that appears to be working. So if I go into mode nine, which is a configuration screen, uh, I'm given the date and time here as well as options to uh, change various system parameters. Uh, again, two goes up, eight goes down, and five selects with the cursor. So I can go down, first of all, I'm going to go down to the VFD, uh, which is in the system menu, because I need to change the brightness. It's a little bit oversaturated, so I just use eight here to drop the brightness down and then set it with five. So I can go into the about screen here and get information on the on, on the uh, OS and the uh, and the unit. This uh, device has 16.968. Just call it 17k of RAM, and I've got about 8k free right now. I will need to uh, do some code cleanup on it, but for the time being, uh, that's what I'm running with. So I'll go ahead and go back to the previous screen here. I can change the date and time. I can change the uh, uh, the time zone. I can also change the units uh, from miles per hour, feet per second, meters per second, kilometers per hour, 
even percent C if I really wanted to uh, to get crazy. I just threw it in there for the heck of it. GPS, I can change baud rate, speedometer, I can calibrate it if I need to, but since it's fed off the GPS, there's really no need to. Uh, odometer, I can calibrate that. Um, again, it's uh, it's fed off of the GPS, so there's really not any need to do that. However, I can reset the odometer if I wish to. Uh, the tachometer, I can calibrate for my engine if the digital pulses are not giving me an accurate tach readout. Likewise, I can calibrate the t uh, the temperature, fuel, and electrical uh, readouts uh, via the uh, by, by adjusting the ADC uh, parameters. So I'll go ahead and go back to the main menu here, and I'm going to power this unit down and go over the hardware. That pretty much sums up the the software side of things for the time being. Uh, the the 13.8 volt um, input from the from the power supply. Is going into this 80 watt digital, uh, or I'm sorry, 80 watt DC to DC converter. It's being stepped down to five volts. It's about 96, 97 percent efficient. So there's very little heat generated from this unit. That five volts is fed into the vacuum fluorescent display here. The ribbon cable here, 16 pin ribbon cable. Two of these lines are five volt. Two of them are ground. So the power is carried down to my motherboard here that I've that I've etched. And below that is the shift register that's driving the vacuum fluorescent display. I'm only using a, an SPI bus here with four pins, so I don't have to tie up. I think it requires uh, 10, 10 uh, pins total to drive this VFD, so I dropped it down to six. Four for the SPI and then the read-write pins for the, uh, for the vacuum fluorescent display. Right below that is a 256 kilobit EEPROM. On the I2C bus, next to it is an LSM303 DLH from SparkFun. This is an I2C um, combination 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis magnetometer. This is a 3.3 volt uh, linear voltage regulator to convert the 5 volt from the uh, vacuum fluorescent display down to the 3.3 volts needed to run everything on the, on the board here. The microcontroller here in the middle is the Maple Mini from Leaf Labs. It, this this part is mostly Arduino compatible. It's very similar in a lot of ways, but this is a 32-bit ARM Cortex M3 running at 72 megahertz. So it definitely has a little bit more power than the Arduino. And uh, over here is an I2C uh, pin header, which is going to this part right here, which is attached to my keypad. This is a part from SparkFun. It is a breakout board for the SX1509, which is a 16-pin port expander on the I2C bus. And this is a Venus 3 GPS, which is hooked up via serial to the uh, Maple Mini. Right below that is an SD card adapter. There's a micro SD card right here, and this is soldered onto the board. The adapter so it kind of gives me a, uh, a really cheap ghetto uh, SD card ad adapter for this board. Uh, if anyone's interested the pin spacing on these SD cards are 0.1 inch so you can just solder a pin header right under there and plug it into a into a breadboard so if anyone's interested in playing around with SD cards on an Arduino that is a little shortcut that you might like to know. Right below that is an MCP3008 this is a part from microchip it is a it is an H-channel SPI analog digital converter. It's 10-bit. And I think that pretty much sums up everything on this board. So if anyone's got any uh, questions, feel free to you know post them in the comments section. Once I get the code rewritten, I'm, I'm rewriting, it, rewriting it from scratch and trying to clean up some stuff. I will put that up on my GitHub. If anyone's interested in any of the um, routines that I've, that I've written, especially the APRS code because that's uh, not really something that people have gotten into too much on the Arduino platform. So the uh, APRS code might interest uh, some other fellow hams. Otherwise, the LSM303 uh, libraries um, are pretty much standard. Those, those are floating around, on the, uh, floating around on the web, so nothing really new there. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to have the uh, send and receive capabilities um, tweaked for the next video. I'm also hooking up a, um, a keyboard, an actual full-size keyboard to this unit 
And over here, if I can grab my keyboard, apologize for the mess here. This is an old IBM PS2 keyboard. I really hate the PS2 connectors, so I replaced the cord with the standard 5-pin DIN AT style. So I will be attaching a uh, chassis mount uh, keyboard port to the front of this panel so I can use keyboard input and hopefully by the next video I can show the the code that I have for APRS sending and receiving as well as uh, hopefully the PSK31 module that I've written um, hopefully I can get that working as well the problem is I have to have a separate audio line running to my radio because my TNC doesn't understand PSK it's just a simple uh, KISS TNC so I hope to have something uh, put together for the next video alright thanks for watching